I'd like to move on to the second district now. It was a tough race over there. We had great candidates, a lot of great candidates, and the three that kind of drifted to the top of the results, Charlie Bass, Jennifer Horn, and Bob Guida, ran great races. They talked about issues, they kept focused on issues, and they carried the Republican message. Uh, in the end, Charlie won, but I have to tell you that Jennifer Horn and Bob Hunt Guida have come rallied behind that. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Republican nominee for Congress from the Second District of New Hampshire, Charlie Bass. spirited campaign during the summer, I have nothing but respect and admiration for Jennifer Horn and Bob Guy. Somewhere between, who knows, China and New Hampshire, but I'm going to be seeing him this afternoon up in the North Country to talk about how we can work together. And I had a wonderful talk with Jennifer in her house the day after the election. We as Republicans have one goal, and that is to send a message to one person in Washington who comes from California that it is time to pack her bags, and that's Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> Oftentimes, in races such as this, it's hard to di distinguish the candidates. Not this year. <laughs> Voters in New Hampshire will have a choice between somebody who has experience somebody who is a fiscal conservative, somebody who will provide a check on the arrogance of Barack Obama, Nancy Pelosi, and Harry Reid, somebody who will cut spending, balance the nation's budget, roll back this outrageous health care reform bill and provide something that works better in its place, somebody who will cast the first vote in the next Congress for anybody but Nancy Pelosi for the next Speaker of the House. in this election by a self-proclaimed progressive liberal activist enjoying the support of such great I better not say that because I'm probably being filmed by <laughs> enjoying the support of strike that word moveon.org democracy for America Howard Dean's favorite advocacy group progressives progressive change campaign committee Emily's List, and the Labor Board. My opponent says that it's time for a new approach. I say that new approach has failed, that it's time for a different approach and a change in Washington starting on January 4th. district will decide on the direction of America. It will be the most important election, frankly, that we face in our lifetimes. We can pick between a failed, jobless, deficit-creating stimulus package. We can pick between the implementation of a health care reform bill that raises taxes hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars gives Americans a choice of one for their health care policy, leads inevitably to socialized medicine in this country. We can pick between record-setting deficits that go over a trillion dollars for the next 10 years and will ruin America and make us poorer than the, many of the countries in the third world. Or we can pick a different course. With Kelly Ayotte, with Frank Ginta, and with myself, we will change the course of America, but we will not do it if we are not successful in November. And as I said a minute ago, the first vote that I will cast and that Frank Ginter will cast 
will be for different leadership in Washington. Leadership that will lead America out of the sanity that we've been in for the last 20 months. Leadership that will take tough positions on issues that, have, that Americans are looking for. Leadership that will check the power of Obama and Pelosi. Now I do have a record of public service. I spent 10 years in the New Hampshire legislature, the New Hampshire State Senate. I was paid $2,000 for 10 years of labor. My opponent boasts that she spent 20 years in the State House. But she was paid millions of dollars. That's how she defines public service. She claims to have written all this great legislation that will change the future of America and make it New Hampshire and make people happy. If I were a legislator or a senator, and I heard a lobbyist claim credit for my legislative initiatives, I'd be insulted. The Democrats used to accuse the Republicans of having lobbyists writing legislation for them. Now, we have a candidate who claims that she's the most critical change element of the New Hampshire legislature, and she's getting paid for it. My friends, we can't put up with this. This is baloney. We need to be united over the next five weeks. We need to stand together uh, for every single office in this state, from governor, to senate, to congress, to executive council, to state senate, to legislator, to county commissioners, treasurers, all of us. We will stand together because what we stand for is better than anything that's there today. I need your help. Governor Sinan said, the next 39 days are going to be the critical days that will set the tone for the next two years. And each and every one of you that is here today needs to work harder than you ever have in the past. And I assure you that I will be working harder than any one of you guys. Frank Ginter will be working harder. John Stephen will be working harder. We will be a unified ticket together make it happen on November 2nd, but we cannot do it without your help. We are a team, we will win, and the future of New Hampshire and America is at stake. I will work as hard as I can to make sure we're victorious. We will have a new agenda in Washington next year. It will be an agenda that you will appreciate, that you will support, and we will end the 20 months of spending, spending, regulating, taking our powers away. We will, we will change the direction of America, and we will do it together. I ask for your support. I ask for your hard work. I ask for you to join us all together in victory on the 2nd of November of this year. Thank you very much.